the Radio Forest Podcast. Rachel Bolin, what's happening, man? Ah, uh, you know. Are you back on the East Coast now? I am. I moved back to Jersey from uh, Nashville. How was the move? How did it go? And, and why the change? It, it's still going. The house is up for sale. Um, we have a shore house up here and so that we recently renovated, but it, it's a getaway. <laughs> we can't fit all my crap in it right now, but it's going well. We're just moving and uh, have some stuff there, some stuff here. It's like, hey, did you see, uh, what did I do <laughs> yeah. with the whatever? Where's like, my oh, toothbrush? Yeah. Yeah, where's my toothbrush? Where's the flat iron? I don't know. <laughs> when you lived in Tennessee, I know you saw Slipknot. Did you get to go backstage with your connection to Corey Taylor and, and playing with Stone Sour? Yeah, yeah. I saw Corey while I was there. Um, I usually do when he come, went through town. And yeah, it, it, uh, I saw them a while ago. They were they were good. That was the first time. That was the only time I saw Slipknot. They were really good. So are you backstage with all of the guys or just kind of a little hang with Corey? Does he introduce you to the all the, uh, just, all the dudes? Just saw Corey. The other guys were warming up. I, I you know I know how it is before a show. I don't want to get in anybody's way, but just hung out and then went to see the show. Now, my first cassette I ever bought was actually your guys' debut, the debut by Skid Row. I mean, I had copies of, like, David Lee Roth and Run DMC and Beach Boys, Guns N' Roses, but the first cassette I walked in with my own money was Skid Row. What was your first album? Probably vinyl? Was it, like, T-Rex or Kiss, or what would you go for? Believe it or not, the very first piece of music that I bought myself, I saved up my allowance, and I bought Sticky Fingers, Rolling Stones, Eight track. <laughs> I did have albums that were handed down to me from my brothers and sisters before that, but that's the first body of music that I paid for myself. Now, you guys got the, the new album out now. I want to talk about it, but first I want to go back to the, the debut. I'd always heard that that album was completely written and done, and then Sebastian came in. Is that accurate? Were they complete, and you're just like, here are the songs to sing? Yeah. Pretty much, all, all except for a couple things here and there, but, but I would say about 98% were written and done, for sure. Is that tough then to see his fame take off when you're like, well, that's that's me and Snake and the guys, or is that just kind of the way it goes? Because I know Ozzy was kind of like that too, like Geezer's writing all the lyrics. Are Ozzy and Sebastian just kind of like the best of the best karaoke singers, or do you not see it that way? No, because we own the publishing. <laughs> oh, so it doesn't matter. No, I don't care. I don't care who's singing it. Plus, it was it was it was Skid Row. You know, it wasn't one person. It was Skid Row. We're all on it, and you know, Snake and I. It's just that's the way it just worked out. You know, Snake and I when we first met, we just started writing songs. We each had our own band, and we didn't commit to a band. And we each did our own gigs and whatever. But we get together and write songs. And then once we saw, like, wow. These songs are really cool. Let's put something together and, and uh, you know, just start playing, uh, playing them for people. And that's how Skid Row was born. It was kind of like a, a two or three step process. But yeah, and so Snake and I were just just ended up the the main songwriters. You know, it's not to say that we didn't want anyone else's contributions because that's not the case. You know, it's just like you know, as soon as you start playing an idea for the guys, whether they like it or not, whether it's a good idea or not. Because sometimes I thought that I think that I have the, the next stairway to heaven and I'll bring it to rehearsal and everyone's like, eh. And you're just like, oh, yeah. that hurt. You know, but it, it is what it is. All five of you have to have to get off on it to, to, for it to become a Skid Row song, you know? The new album is fantastic. I mean, it's more Skid Row than I've ever heard Thank you guys be since, like, Slave to the Grind. So on Tear It Down, When the Lights Come On, and Hell or High Water, there's some background singing. Is that all of you guys, or is that Eric being kind of like doubled and tripled, or is, is that the whole band singing backup for him? Well, uh, yeah, no, gang vocals is is, is, uh, is the band, you know, and it's some um, outside guys like friends of ours, like Paul Taylor and Ryan Cook, you know, down in Nashville, it's just old buddies. It's like, come on, this is, you know, because it's not really about, like the songs, the way they are, they're not really about precision. It's just like, okay, we want guys that have fun together, that just love rock and roll to come in and sing this stuff. So it's not like we went out and hired some backup singers or anything. It's us and, and a few of our friends. The reason why I asked that was it seemed like a kind of a different vibe, and I wanted to know if you had to change your writing style when Eric came in. You're like, oh, we can do these these kind of harmonies behind him, or was that kind of like the debut record sort of already written out? It, it was all, the, 
every every note of that record was written. I mean, he came up with harmonies here and there that he did with himself on there, but just little accent harmonies we like to refer to. But yeah, that whole record was written. Talk to me real quick about being a Kiss fan and then ending up getting to know Ace and also playing more than one of the Kiss farewell tours. I mean, that's kind of huge. Yeah, it is It is pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> we had the last show we did, the uh, last couple shows we did with Kiss over in Europe this year. I had mentioned that to Paul. I go, do you know we're the only band that has played both of your farewell tours? <laughs> he started cracking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to play in front of Kiss, and being the huge Kiss fans we were, and that was a common ground, especially with Snake and Scotty and myself, we also, our first concert was all on the same tour in three different places within four different days, and we didn't know each other in 1977 or 78, whenever it was. But when we all got together, it just started talking, because Scotty and I were in a band before Skid Row, and we were just talking. It's like, oh yeah, I saw them here, and I was like, wow, I saw them like three days earlier here. And then when we met Snake, it's like, oh, I saw him the day after that. So it's pretty crazy. And when we were watching the, uh, one of the shows in Germany before we had to fly home, I, I turned to Snake. I go, this may be the last time we ever see this band because we're going to be touring uh, on their last run through the state. And it was just, it was, the, I can't even explain the gravity. <laughs> just like, wow, this is where it all started for us. And, and this is where. Just, we get to see, you know, and it's just like, it's going to be an odd world without Kiss in it, man. Now, tell me real quick about Skid Row Spirits that you guys have coming out. You've got your kind of, your own booze. Yeah, we have a, a rum. Well, we have two rums right now. We're, we're releasing the 18 and Life rum, which is really good. It, it, I wasn't a rum guy, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this tastes good. And then I, I was like, wow, this tastes actually really, really good. And <laughs> it's just, yeah, and we got a vodka coming out. And it's through a company called Brands for Fans, and this is this is their specialty. But it's not it's not about just slapping your name on a label and slapping it on a bottle. Like we we've been working on this for over a year now, like testing, a taste testing, and and just designing the bottle and designing the graphics on the bottle. So this has been an ongoing process that now we finally reached it a few weeks ago, and they're like, okay, cool, let's do this now. Because we're very protective of our brand, and we don't want it to be something that people are going to be like, eh, it looks good on the shelf. Just leave it up there, but I'm not going to drink this crap. It's not like that at all. It's Rachel Bolin from Skid Row. The gang's all here. New album. It sounds fantastic. The production is clean. They sound revitalized. And the gang's all here tour coming through Idaho, December 14th, Revolution Concert House with Buck Cherry. Rachel Bolin, a complete honor, man. Can't wait to see you in Idaho, and good luck on the tour, and I love the new album. Thank you so much, man. We'll see you soon.